So, for any row stochastic matrix uh, max eigenvalue is 1 and if the graph is and if the underlying graph is strongly connected strongly connected then one is also a also a simple eigenvalue so in order to look at this so let's look at so fact one was every so we were using this particular it was here. A real symmetric matrix has real eigenvalues and it is also diagonalizable. Let us look at fact 2. So, something that we have already looked at which is a row stochastic matrix has an eigenvalue which is 1 right. So, 1 is an eigenvalue. Okay. So, everyone with me on this? So, a times vector of 1 is simply 1s. So, 1 is one of the eigenvalues of a row stochastic matrix. Fact number 3, no, so which is basically related to the point that we just above mentioned just above. So, the no other eigenvalue is more than 1 for row stochastic. So, how do we show this? So, let us say there exists a lambda greater than 1. So, we are going to show this by contradiction. There exists lambda greater than 1, which is also the eigenvalue of this of a row stochastic matrix, right. matrix A with let us say eigenvalue V, eigenvector V with V being the eigenvector. Okay. So, A times V, okay, it is going, it is first of all it is going to be lambda times V and let us say, let us, let us say I being the V, let us say J in over here. Okay. So, choose a max largest entry of your uh, eigenvector. Okay. So, if I do A times V, I am going to get. So, basically, the effect of this A times V would be lambda times V. So, that means for that particular ith entry, I am going to be getting what? So, lambda times Vi for that ith entry. Okay which is going to be greater than vi because lambda is more than 1. But at the same time, what do the entries of A look like? It is essentially convex combinations of different v's right. Like it is essentially like if I do A times v, it is essentially doing convex combinations of different v's if every row of A. And that means every element is going to be smaller than the, so this A times v, the ith element of this is going to be less than or equal to vi right. So, from one end we are getting it strictly greater than vi, from other end we are saying it is less than or equal to vi, so which is a contradiction and therefore you cannot have an eigenvalue more than, so this is a contradiction and therefore you cannot have an eigenvalue which is more than 1 for a row stochastic matrix, okay. So, that is uh, the fact, that is fact number 3. And the fact number 4 is if the underlying graph is 
strongly connected. Then one is also a simple eigenvalue. And the proof is of this is going to be very similar to how we looked at uh, the proof for the Laplacians for the number of connected components, right? So, if the graph is connected, then one is the simple eigenvalue. That means uh, algebraic multiplicity of one is also uh, is same as ge geometric multiplicity of this one eigenvalue, which is going to be one. Okay. So, with all the uh, sort of key ingredients, uh, so I'm going to uh, list out this theorem. I mean you can I will maybe share post a proof on teams, but uh, we will probably not have proof in this class. But then this would be this using this particular result we are then going to conclude that uh, for row stochastic matrix which are also symmetric in that case you are going to be arriving at uh, average consensus and not just the uh, consensus. So, let be a non negative. So, let A be a non negative matrix with dominant eigenvalue lambda and the right and left eigenvectors are V and W. Such that V transpose W is one. If lambda is simple, and strictly strictly larger in magnitude than all other eigenvalues. Then we have limit k going to infinity ok. So, let us revisit this statement. So, what this says is that let a be an uh, a be a square matrix uh, which is a non negative matrix. So, that means every entry is greater than or equal to 0 and the dominant eigenvalue of this matrix is lambda. For that eigenvalue lambda the right and the left eigenvectors are V and W ok. So, what do we mean by right eigenvector? So, A, A times V is lambda V. So, that is a right eigenvector. W transpose A is equal to uh, lambda W transpose that is basically your left eigenvector ok. So, the right eigen right and the left eigenvectors are V and W for corresponding to this lambda and we also normalize these eigenvectors. So, that V transpose W is equal to 1. So, if lambda is simple ok and strictly larger in magnitude than all other eigenvalues, then limit of this is essentially V w transpose ok. So, let us look at the consequence of this in the context uh, of consensus problems. So, application of our theorem in the context of average consensus. So, first of all uh, we are going to be working with matrix matrices which are row stochastic right. So, A is row stochastic. So, what is the dominant eigenvalue? 1 right. So, is row A is row stochastic. So, dom, dom, lambda is equal to 1 and what is the right and the left eigenvectors? So, V is going to be let us say vector of all 1s. 
the next thing that we introduce is lambda being simple right. So, if the underlying graph is connected, so then lambda is simple. So, if and that also makes sense if the graph is connected that means then we would be able to exchange and like any node will be able to exchange information with any other node and that is when we can talk about nodes arriving at consensus right. So, if the underlying graph is connected graph is connected so this implies lambda equal to 1 is simple right? ok. So, on top of this if A is symmetric so which means it is also column is stochastic ok. Then what is a left Eigen vector? It will be a vector of all 1s divided by n divided by n because we want to make sure that we transpose w is equal to 1 right. So, ok is this clear? So, now if A is row stochastic and symmetric which makes A to be column stochastic we assume that the underlying graph is connected. So, therefore, this lambda equal to 1 is simple and because rho A is rho stochastic lambda is equal to 1 is also dominant. So, all the conditions of this particular theorem are being satisfied and therefore, limit k goes to infinity A to the k I mean lambda is equal to 1 right. So, this implies as a consequence of this particular theorem limit k going to infinity A to the k essentially is equal to V w transpose which is 1 1 transpose divided by n ok. And if I look at the consensus algorithm which looks something like this x k plus 1 is a to the k plus 1 x naught. So, limit k goes to infinity x k plus 1 is essentially limit k goes to infinity a to the k which is 1 1 transpose over n. So, this is equal to 1 1 transpose x naught over n right and this means that every agent arrives at the so 1 over n summation i equal 1 through n x i 0. ok. So, 1 transpose x x naught is basically the summation of all the and then it is the same vector that is getting repeated and then you divide it by n. So, that means you arrive at the average consensus ok. So, a sufficient condition for average consensus is rho stochastic A is symmetric underlying graph is connected so if all these three are satisfied then you can guarantee that the the nodes they reach average ok. Is this clear? And that is why now if I uh, if you look at if you consider the previous example that we looked at in the second case when A 2 or the mate the in the second algorithm when A was doubly stochastic or rho stochastic I mean both rho stochastic as well as symmetric then we saw that the agents or the sensors values they reached like all of them they converge to this number 24 right. So, the, this is just a sufficient condition. It may happen that with just with a uh, non symmetric A which is just rho stochastic you, in certain cases you may get average consensus, but uh, this is as I said this is not necessary this is just sufficient condition ok. So, if I consider two different types of graphs so something like let us say a line graph. or you have a complete graph right some which ok. 
let's say there are five nodes. So in a complete graph, every node is connected to every other node and so on. Okay. Okay. So how many nodes, like let's say if you have n nodes here, how many edges here? Edges is n minus 1 and diameter diameter is also n minus 1 right. So, you would need what about uh, number of edges here and yeah n choose 2 and diameter just 1 right because in one step you would be able to reach any other node. So, diameter is just 1. So, which is preferred uh, a line graph or a complete graph? In general, let us say you want to run a decentralized uh, distributed algorithm which so first of all which one do you think uh, would uh, it is it is easier to arrive at consensus or it is faster to arrive at consensus faster right. So, consensus is faster here. right but then what is the shortcoming of uh, yeah so communication i mean you have a high communication bandwidth requirement for every node right so that is also not preferred so consensus i mean it's a plus but then it's not so good in when it comes to communication bandwidth requirement right Okay. Okay. So oh, yeah, which one? From yeah. Okay. So again, the topology plays a key role. Uh, I mean, obviously, you can in one case you can arrive at the let's say I mean it, right now we are just talking about consensus, but when we are talking about solving a distributed optimization problem. In one case, it is because the consensus happens faster, it is also possible to arrive at the optimal solution for the common goal faster, but then it comes at the cost of uh, requiring high communication bandwidth, right. So, every node is going to be communicating with n minus 1 nodes in this in this case, whereas here every node is communicating with just 2 nodes at best. So, this I mean, so this in, in, in terms of communication line graph, line graph essentially has a very low uh, communication bandwidth requirement, right. So, it is basically uh, somewhere midway is what I mean what an ideal topology would look like and if you and in that in that case so that is something called static and we will come to this later uh, maybe towards the last set of lectures is something called static exponential graphs which in some sense uh, arrive basically achieve the sweet, sweet spot between the communication bandwidth requirement as well as the uh, di like basically also trying to minimize the diameter. So, so we will uh, so what static exponential graph is that every node is let us say the node 1 it is going to be connected to uh, its second node then 2 to the sec 2 to the which is the fourth node then the eighth node and so on. So, every node sort of is in a in a modular fashion is going to be connected to uh, its immediate then 2 to the 1 which is second node then 2 to the 2 which is 4th node, 2 to the 3 which is 8th node and that is how you in fact it is a directed graph and you can show in fact there is very recent paper it showed that this is kind of uh, is better than any known topologies whether it complete graph, line graph there is also something called ring graph which is essentially an extension of line graph but it just by closing the ring it reduces the diameter by half right because now the information earlier it was n minus 1 now it will be n minus 1 over 2 or n by 2 depending on. So, this is so diameter becomes half whereas the communication bandwidth requirement is pretty much the same except for the two end nodes which which were earlier exchanging information with just one neighbor now they are going to be exchange, everyone is going to be exchanging information with just two neighbors but the but the uh, diameter kind of it becomes half of the original one right. So, nearly half of ok. 
okay. So, the role of the topology is going to play a key, I mean the topology is going to play a very key role and as I said uh, in the previous lecture that related to topology or the graph diameter is your Fiedler value and you would see that uh, the algorithms that we are going to be deriving uh, the rate the basically the rate of convergence that is going to be dependent on the Fiedler value of the underlying network. So, smaller diameter means larger Fiedler value and smaller diameter means uh, you can arrive at consensus faster. So, they are going to be proportional to the Fiedler value ok. So, before we arrive like before we start discussing the algorithm I just wanted to briefly discuss uh, two key results uh, that we would eventually use uh, in the subsequent lectures. Some important results on. So, let us say if I have something like this. So, then there are n, n agents in the network ok and we assume that it is an undirected unweighted graph. So, a i j's are going to be 1 if there is an edge and 0 else. The sin is a signum function ok. So, sin of x i minus x j. So, that is going to be I mean you can also imagine these to be vector valued functions. So, x i is can so every agent need not just have a scalar quantity every agent can have a vector valued quantity right. So, so then you basically evaluate this component wise. So, the idea is if you have an odd function like this like a signum function here. So, summation of something like this is going to be so it could have been f of x i minus x j where f is an odd function. So, as long as you have that odd function this is going to be 0. So, a quick proof of this so, component wise. So, let us say t is this is what we are trying to evaluate. So, by definition this is nothing but j from 1 through n a i j. By the way this is true for undirected ok. So, is this clear? So, instead of writing j over the neighborhood set I, rep I basically iterate j from 1 through n, but I use a i j ok. And since i and j are dummy indices I can write this as j 1 through n a j i ok. And these are undirected unweighted graphs. So, a i j is same as a j i both are equal to 1 and sin of x j minus x i is minus of sin of x i minus x j. So, this becomes j 1 through n which is minus t right. So, this implies that t is equal to 0 or essentially what we wanted to arrive at. ok. So, we use sign because eventually the optimization algorithm that we are going to be using it is going to be a signed gradient flow. So, that is why I am I am using sign here, but as I said this would hold true for any odd function. The only property of signum that we use here was uh, I mean it is essentially an odd function. So, any odd function and this would have still worked. It can also be a vector valued odd function in that case we would assume uh, uh, it basically applies component wise ok. So, that is what that is one result. Another result that we wanted to arrive at was 1 through n
okay so the uh, another result that we want to derive and again this this is the result that we would be eventually using later so that's why i'm deriving it right now is this particular term which is nothing but saying that summation i1 through n summation j in the neighborhood set of i ei transpose w x i j this is equal to this particular term okay so ei x i j is essentially the difference between x i and x j and i'm just denoting this by x i j so in the previous example in the previous result this is x i j x i minus x j and let's say L, uh, node i also has another vector ei another piece of information ei so this is nothing but this particular term if w is an odd function okay so let's quickly take a look at the proof So since w is an odd function, x i j is x i minus x j. So this becomes x j. If I write it in terms of x j i, then it basically a i j e i transpose w x j i. And again, since i and j are dummy indices, I can write this as i j one through n. A J I E J transpose W X I J. Okay, and A J I is same as A I J because it's an undirected unweighted graph. So therefore, this is A I J E J transpose W X I J. Okay, and this pretty much uh, so. This is two times of. So what do we want to arrive? All oh, right, I just add the same quantity to it, right? So if I add this quantity over here, so essentially the same quantity, so two times of this. E i transpose w x i j. Essentially, I add the same quantity over here, and this gives me okay, which is same as through n a i j e i j transpose w x i j. And this basically gives us the result that we wanted to arrive at. Okay. So basically, a key consequence of this result is so this one is in terms of my own information, right? But then I can sort of write it in terms of the relative information that I'm going to be receiving from my neighbors. So essentially, I'm writing this E i and using E i j, which is the relative information that I have with respect to my neighbors. So essentially, as long as W is an odd function, this is this is the uh, this this holds true for undirected unweighted graphs. Okay. So these two results. Uh, so I, I guess that's all I wanted to cover in today's lecture. And these two results, we are eventually so in the next lecture, set of lectures, we are going to be uh, basically both describing the algorithm for consensus first of all, and also then for distributed optimization. But in both these scenarios, we would be making use of these uh, results. And the same idea of fixed time gradient flow that we looked at. So if you think of fixed time uh, gradient flows, uh, what we do is you have gradient divided by the norm of the gradient, right? which kind of almost uh, looks like you are trying to use some kind of signum information. And that's where this sign uh, thing comes into picture because you are going to be using uh, uh, the signum or the signed gradient flow there.
okay